Uh, thanks for the introduction. Uh, I'm Eyal Krupka, and this project uh, is developed by my lab, uh, Advanced Technology Labs Israel, uh, with Kfir Karmon, Noam Bloom, Daniel Friedman, Ilya Govic, Aviv Ovitz, Idol Richter, Yoni, Yuval, Alon, and Aon Barilel. Uh, what I'm going to present is a software development kit uh, for hand gesture for PC. Uh, we use Intel uh, RealSense uh, Re Intel RealSense camera, which is a depth camera, and we enable to customize customize any hand gesture. So let me start by defining what makes a gesture uh, SDK a good uh, gesture SDK. For a development time, we want the, gest the gestures to be flexible, you want to define any gesture that you want. In other words, you want expressiveness of the SDK. Uh, on the other hand, you want it to be easy to use. Uh, three, four years ago, I worked for Xbox One, and uh, it took us about one and a half year to just uh, develop a three gesture. Now we want to be in completely, we want to be in one and a half minute, not one and a half year. Uh, on runtime, obviously, we want it to be accurate and low compute. And uh, by low compute, I don't mean real time. I mean that you run it on a low-end PC. It occupies only a fraction of your CPU, so we'll, you will be able to do other things on your PC. So let's start with discussing in details the expressiveness of the SDK. In the two, three years, there is a lot of uh, very successful work on uh, articulated hand skeleton which means uh, both in uh, the, the industry, Leap Motion and Intel uh, SDK, and uh, also in a conference and, uh, and academic work. And uh, in articulated and skeleton, you get uh, 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 many parameters, like the positions of all joints in hand, represented in a different uh, possible way. One possible way is the location of each of the joint. So we might think that uh, it's a good idea to use the articulated skeleton uh, to develop a, a customized gesture. So on first sight, it seems great. Like nearly any gesture, any pose that I do with my hand, I can define using the articulated parameters. However, it's very complex to do it. Uh, we have a lot of parameters. For each of the parameters, for each pose, we need to define the value of the parameter. Many of the parameters need to be defined relative one to relative to each other. You need to calculate angles in three dimensional. Sometimes you need to take into account the point of view of the camera. And even if you successfully do it, you also need to take, a, take account the noise of the skeleton tracking. Even though we made a lot of progress as a community with the skeleton, articulated skeleton, it's not perfect, it's uh, noisy. And uh, the noise is not simple. It, the noise might be several parameters that have a joint noise together. And uh, to take it, it into account makes it even more complex. And the last one, which is very important, is that people do gestures very differently. Suppose the articulated skeleton is perfect. And suppose you were able to define this uh, like gesture. You try it, it works, the thumb is up. You try it on a couple of your friends and it works great, you are happy with it. Once you go out and more people try it, you find that uh, once one in about 10 person cannot do 90 degree like, it does this. It's literally painful for him to push it uh, even more. So the one who developed with articulated gesture need to do, know all about all these limitations. So this makes the usage of articulated skeleton expert-only domain, and it also takes very long time. So it's definitely not uh, answer the ease of use that we want. And now let's discuss it, uh, how you ma we make it easy to use for developers and UX researchers. So first I want to mention a, a, a similar work in the spirit, uh, which is Proton++. Uh, which is for multi-touch gesture that uh, in, instead of using machine learning and complex for the developer, uh, they, they developed a language that you can easily define uh, how the gesture is done on the multi-touch screen and, uh, and be able to define the gesture. Uh, the question is how to take it to the hand, uh, articulated hand gestures, which has much more degrees of freedom and uh, also the technology is less accurate. So the project inside Microsoft uh, is called Project Prague, uh, and let's see how we define the hand, uh, hand model with the SDK of Project Prague. So we start with a pose, a pose defined by, by the direction of the palm. The palm direction include two, 
two uh, parameters. One is where the palm is facing, and the second is the vector that goes up the palm, where is it facing? Here it's facing forward toward the camera, and, and uh, the orientation is up. This is right orientation, this is up, and we have six possible value up, down, left, right, front, uh, and uh, forward and backward. Similar uh, idea is for each of the fingers. We can define the direction of the fingertip of each of the finger. Six directions are possible, up, down, and so on. And also we can define the deflection of the finger, whether it's folded, open, or stretch, or slightly folded. Next, we can define relative uh, positions of fingers. For example, if I want to define this pose, it's easier to do it by defining that the, the index is above the thumb. And last, we can define uh, which finger are touching each other. This is not touching, this is touching. So if you look on the language, it's discrete language. No angles, no vectors, no complex math. It's simple English with discrete value for each of the variables. So let me take a simple example of how we define uh, this pose in the image. So we say that this is left hand. We say that the palm is facing forward and the orientation is up. All the five fingers are opened. This is defined also as open. This is folded. This is open. Index is above the thumb, and the thumb and index are touching. So this is as simple to define a pose. Now, this may sound very limiting relative to articulated skeleton. But in fact, if we check the American Sign Language, we see that we can define nearly all the poses. I say nearly because there are some minor details that may not that be very accurate, but mo almost all of it can be defined using this language. So once we define a single pose, defining a gesture is simple. It's a combined of a series of poses. So for example, the top gesture is uh, you start by uh, hand not pinching, then hand pinching, and then again not pinching. So this sequence of three poses define the, the top gesture. Now, I described it in English, but it's nearly as simple to define it using XAML C Sharp, and we also have a visual tool for this. For in XAML, you just define a gesture name is tap, then you define the two hand poses that defines this gesture. Each of the hand poses is defined in simple, it's really, it's 10 minutes to learn how to do it with, from, from several examples. You can define the no pitch using the same description, you can define the pinch, and then to define the gesture, you just uh, describe it as a state machine moving from idle to no pinch, from no pinch to pinch, and so on. In C Sharp, it looks very similar and takes a few minutes to define a new gesture. Uh, we also developed a visual tool that you can avoid the, call, the code altogether, where you can define each of the atoms of the hand pose using a, a few mouse clicks. Now, all of this could be a nice story that has no usefulness if we didn't have the technology to support all of this. So, Using just the existing articulated hand skeleton technology was not good enough to achieve that, and uh, we, we developed a, a new technology to, uh, to uh, support it so the runtime will be both accurate and low compute. I will not go into details of the technology. The details are in the paper. It's a lot of technical complex details, so we we'll just uh, give the main idea. Uh, we do start by uh, finding uh, the key uh, points and the landmarks on the, on the hand, which are the fingertips and their direction. And uh, we also calculate directly, not through the articulated skeleton, the key atoms, uh, like that I, some of the key atoms that I described, like whether fingers are touching or not touching. And uh, another important thing, which we do not use tracking, like tracking use previous frame and update the hand model. The problem is that if I do a quick gesture, then the key, the, I, have, I might have only a few frames for the entire gesture, so you, I must be able to recognize each single frame, the gesture and the pose very accurately. So I will skip the pipeline description and just uh, mention the key element that repeats itself during the pipeline. We take the hard problem of recognizing the hand pose, uh, divide it to hundreds of sub-problems of fine parameters, some of them are redundant, uh, of the hand and the hand uh, gesture, or sorry, the hand pose. 
And then each of the small elements we solve using a fast classifier, which is called convolutional table ensemble that was developed specially for this purpose. And uh, you can read the, the, the details in the paper. The key idea is that the basic element classifier is much faster than uh, the current the state of the art deep learning and all the other very accurate but not so fast classifiers. So we end up with high accuracy. We are able to recognize pose in 10 milliseconds per frame. And we also be able to rec uh, uh, guess, have a good guess where the fingers are even when they are occluded. If we compare it to the state of the art on a NYU data set, uh, we find that we get similar accuracy to the state of the art. Uh, however, we are able to do it also for short gestures, as I mentioned, single frame. And we are more than an uh, order of magnitude faster in terms of CPU. Uh, if we test our accuracy on gesture recognition, uh, we find that for most gestures, the detection rate is 100%, but for some gestures, the detection rate is lower. Overall, the average accuracy tested among multiple users is high, and we have very low false posit uh, detection rate. And again, I refer you to the paper for the definition, what is low. So to summarize, we satisfy all the key elements that we define for good uh, gesture development. Uh, accuracy, low compute, expressiveness, and easy, easy to use. And uh, the project, as I mentioned, is called Project Prague. Uh, soon we are going to announce uh, details about when it's going to be released uh, for uh, first test and beta. Uh, you can send me email or to the gesture at Microsoft.com, which is the email of the project, uh, to get more details and, uh, and uh, offer collaboration or uh, whatever. Now let me move to a short demo. So I have this YouTube movie here. I want to move it to full screen. I did this gesture and it does it full screen. Now I want to pause. I did the, the top gesture and it pause. I want it to continue. I want to mute. I do the shut up gesture. I will do it in front of the camera. I will pause it and bring it back to regular screen size. And uh, many people who deal with gesture know that people ask what is the killer application for gesture. Well, um, up until now, I'm in this domain for a while. We didn't find a killer application, but we found a lot of uh, nice scenarios and nice uh, additional input device. And now once the development of new gesture is so easy, we can enrich a lot of application with gesture. And I will give another example. Uh, suppose I have a, a Skype uh, talk with someone or broadcast my, in live stream and I want to add more fun to the interaction, I can do like. Just did a like gesture. Um, I can also uh, drop the mic if I have a really nice point. <laughs> and uh, let me... Okay, I, I will end with this. Drop the mic is a good ending for the talk. And uh, now I'm available for questions. Sorry, I don't hear you. Karthik Ramani from Purdue University. We were one of the curves you showed in, in comparison, but that was 2015, 2017 now. But that said, um, I was kind of reminded of, of uh, the early Palm Pilot. Again, um, where you constructed, you know, you had the symbolic uh, language and so on and so forth. Uh, so my question really is, how do you, uh, you know, transition between gestures and also a lot of the gestures 
construct for for uh, these kind of things are somewhat artificial. Even when you uh, drop your fingers, so on and so forth. So can you comment more about <laughs> I, I can't understand what you say before because of the microphone. No, it doesn't work. <laughs> okay, so um, maybe we want to come here. <laughs> maybe I should come and uh, talk yeah, to DM. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. Seems to come and go. Um, okay. So, so what didn't you understand in my question? Oh. The, the, last, the last two sentences. Yeah, so it still seems too artificial. One is the transition between gestures and the relationship between gestures and memorability. Um, you know, even if you construct uh, 20 or 30 of these things. So how do you see this playing out um, in terms of uh, reality? Uh, okay, I will show another. I didn't prepare this demo, but it's supposed to work. I now did mouse, uh, you, you see it? Yes. I now m did mouse over, over the uh, uh, speaker mute, and what you, I see here is a reminder of how the gesture for mute look like. Now what we did for any place that you have a gesture, you get a reminder of what gesture can activate it. So you use your laptop as you use every day, and you explode the gesture one after the other, and that way you will be able to learn it over time. And I agree that the gesture are artificial. The try to do natural is a problem because every person sees natural as a very different thing. And even if they see it as a similar thing, they do the gesture in a different way. So we must have some, some way to teach them how to do the gesture, and this is the way we do it now. It, by the way, it is also supported by the SDK. Once you define a gesture, it is able to, it, it, the SDK is able to animate it. Yes, please. Isaac Wang, University of Florida. Um, very interesting tech, looking forward to seeing it. Um, just had a few questions. Um, so what, um, what would be like the resolution necessary or how far away can your hands be away from the camera um, and like the accurate recognition accuracy of that? Okay, currently we design it for uh, Intel uh, SR300 camera, which is short range camera. It means that be, if you are more than 60 centimeters away, the accuracy is going to degrade. So it currently it's only for near field and the scenario where you put the camera on, on the desk and use it for the PC or on top of the screen. Uh, in future, Intel is going to improve their camera also for long range, and uh, we might consider to use it for long range scenarios. Thank you. You mean one gesture after the other? Uh, currently, we assume that gesture starts from some idle, random state. You do a gesture, and then the gesture end. However, if there are specific sequence that you want to handle uh, that can split, we can define state machine that the first two states are joined, and then you split between two other states. But need, this needs to be defined uh, uh, preliminary. Otherwise, you can, might get confusing and overlap uh, gestures. Thank you very much. Is there time for one more? <laughs> um, okay, okay, one more short question. Then. Great, thanks. Um, Anna from Alta University. Um, I was wondering how robust your recognition is for um, people perform gestures in different ways and different anatomical constraints allow you to move your fingers or not. So how well does that work? This is an excellent question because the first part of the project uh, to understand the articulated skeleton in a few milliseconds actually was the easiest part of the project. We were surprised to find how people do the gesture in a very different way. And uh, the answer to this is we are fairly robust, but the user must learn how to do the gesture. If we take a first time user and you just try it, for 80% of the people it will work, but the other 20% will must invest time. By the way, invest time is one minute top. It's not a lot of time, but without this one minute investment, uh, it's not, it is not going to work good enough. Thank you. Thank you.